y'all. <laughs> 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 this how it's just it it's it it's is us. it is us it is start. us okay. welcome to sharpen y'all mm-hmm. um where no matter the candid conversation we always end up whittling life down to what matters most and we hope that as you hang out with us today you will be inspired to do the same i'm nicole payne danielle perry lynn rue natara blount and today's topic is emotional intelligence i would like to start out reading a definition of the term that I found, and it says that emotional intelligence is the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions, and to handle so interpersonal relationships um, judiciously and... Were y'all reading the definitions from the website? Uh, I think I did. I read mine from the website. Oh, okay. I'm reading it from this one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it says, <clears throat> emotionally intelligent leaders can walk in another person's shoes Knowing what someone is going through helps them to understand them better. It's why empathy is a key component of successful leadership. Understanding managers are approachable and they listen. The upshot of that is engaged teams and harmonious workplace cultures. Um, And then the different strategies. uh, Start listening to others more without interrupting. Put yourself in someone else's shoes, especially during a disagreement. Recognize and show your appreciation for your team members. Be open to sharing your feelings where appropriate. Volunteer for a role in a worthy cause. Practice loving kindness, meditation, or mindfulness. Nah, we gonna say um, meditate on the word of God. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you can still practice loving kindness. Um, And work on your body language and reading that of others. Um, So empathy, I think, for me, when it comes to empathy, if I'm not careful, I'll over empathize. And what I mean by that is I've always been the kind of person to look at things from another person's shoes, but that can become people pleasing. Mm-hmm. That can become a hindrance if I'm not careful because I'm discounting or discrediting what I'm actually feeling because I'm so focused on them. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually have a tendency to over empathize and that that just goes into being anxious and being worried. And I wonder what they thought about that. How did they feel about that? And it just becomes too much. So this is actually something that I could work on Um, as I'm even talking right now. I'm thinking about that. Like this is something I actually can work on. Um, You have been, though. I have been. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I can think of instances where. You were talking about um, when we did the generosity episode. Mm -hmm. I think you were out. But we did the generosity episode, and you were talking about how you don't always have to give people an explanation as to why you can't be generous. Right. Like, I think Mm -hmm. that that points to you working on, I don't always have to go. I don't always have to Mm -hmm. over-empathize. I don't always have to Mm -hmm. think about what the result is or what they're going to think about me. Like, you know, you're you're allowing God to to help you work on that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Now, I think when I am doing it correctly, um, it definitely is beneficial to whomever I'm empathizing for because my heart just goes out to that person Mm -hmm. for whatever it is. Um, And so I like when I'm able to pour into people. I like when I'm able to um, give wisdom and, and pray with them and pray for them or whatever the case may be. So when I'm doing it well, and I think that speaks to anybody when we empathize well, um, it, it's, it serves others very well, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and they see that you are a person that they can come to with whatever they may need. Um, so yeah, and I thought about those, uh, toxic thinking traits. I don't know if you guys were able to look at them, but my previous or my old therapist, she sent me basically a list of toxic thinking patterns and two of them stood out for me. One of them is magnification. Mm -hmm. And that's blowing things out of proportion Mm -hmm. or inappropriately shrinking something to make it seem less important. For me, it's more so the blowing things out of proportion. If I'm not careful, um, like I said, I'll overthink things or I'll 
begin to just take on another person's emotions mm -hmm. and feelings. Yep. And you were kind of talking about that earlier. Um, but I do it in an unhealthy way if I'm not careful. So it's the magnification. It's taking something small. What, what's that saying? Taking a something out of molehill. Making hill. a mountain out, out of a yeah. molehill. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what I have a tendency to do. Like I'll just take something so small and blow it up. And it's like, but it's not that serious. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I've gotten better with that, especially as God has been helping me to not be so um, just people pleasing um, and, and being OK with saying, no, nah, I can't I can't do that, you know, or whatever the case may be. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's still something that I'm working on. And then the other thing that I thought about was the thought, the pattern that's called personalization. It says blaming yourself or taking responsibility for something that wasn't completely your fault. Mm -hmm. So again, it's like, <laughs> if I'm not careful, I'll just take on all of this guilt when really I wasn't the person that started whatever the, whatever the situation is, you know, I'll mm -hmm. kind of just take it on and be like, well, I apologize that. But that's, again, that's people pleasing and right. that's not allowing the situation to, to be what it is. Um, so granted, I think that God is definitely helping me with this and I know that I've grown a lot, um, but I still have some things to grow in for sure. So yeah, when it comes to empathy, I need to be more balanced with it and not be overly empathetic. I have communication. Um, and basically, it's effective communication. It's one of the soft skills that um, are sometimes employers are looking for, but also, you know, communication. All right. So a simple definition of communication is the act of transferring information from one person, um, from one place, person, or group to another. Um, that's the simple definition. Um, it just... And from the website that we were using, that we were looking at, it says leaders with good social skills are very approachable, easy to talk to, and therefore strong, they said team leaders, but, you know, just strong leaders. Um, effective communication is important um, for it. It helps build meaning, meaningful, mutual, respectful relationships and what it what they were saying was that you have um, you're basically somebody who can carry a more persuasive influence. Um, you cultivate awareness amongst the group that you're with or whomever you're involved with. Um, you have the ability at both conflict and relational management. Um, you enhance social awareness. Um, sometimes you have the ability to be a mentor. Um, it helps you to be a better leader, and it also helps you to um, mentorship for developing people and that you're basically an expert with collaboration and um, cooperation. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, I went further, and I was looking at John Maxwell, a lot of his, you know, I read a lot of his books, but we all have as mm -hmm. well. Um, it talks about communication and he gave like some points that we needed to make sure that we were looking at. It's not what communication isn't what you say, but it's how you say it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that was something that my mom used to say to me a lot when I was growing up. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. I didn't always have effective communication skills. So she, uh, she, simpler, she definitely would stress that to me. Uh, because I was that one, like, you know, I'm going to give you the facts. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not, ne I wasn't always necessarily cognizant of how how I was delivering it mm -hmm. and how, you know, um, <clears throat> the other person felt when I was saying it. It was like, you know, I'm, or, you know, sometimes uh, <laughs> in dealing with my students, they'll, you know, they'll say something and, I generally will just look at them and then their that statement they always say is like, I'm just being honest, you mm. know. And while I thank you for your honesty. <laughs> um I think I thank you. <laughs> I I do always lead with that. I thank you for your honesty. Um 
However, I think that could have been delivered better, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, But they're young, you know, they're teenagers, Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. it's like whatever. All right, and then, you know, you have to know your audience. Um, You definitely have to know who you're having a conversation with. Mm -hmm. Um, When when you are communicating, things that I would say um, with you all... um, I wouldn't probably have that that be so free mm-hmm. with it if I was talking to Sid. Mm-hmm. Although I am pretty free with Sid, and sometimes Sid is like, "My, I don't need all of that." <laughs> um, too free, same. <laughs> yeah, but you do. But either way, you mm-hmm. know, um, she does. So you know, it's just you need to know your audience, and you. I always tell my students have when I'm when I'm having a conversation with them. Because, again, they're in that age where they just feel like, you know, I can say whatever I want to say and I don't necessarily need the filters. Um, you you have to learn how to code switch or you need to learn how to wear different hats. Mm-hmm. A lot of times mm-hmm. when I'm talking to the athletes, the athletes, I will let them know, like, okay, if you're playing football, you don't wear the same equipment that you would in basketball. They're two different sports, two different games. Um, two different sets of rules Mm -hmm. and you know what how you would respond on the football field you would not respond the same way on the basketball court so Mm -hmm. you need to tackling folks on the basketball right you're not tackling crazy (laughs) (laughs) you know and you're not coming out with all the padding Mm -hmm. and all of that other stuff Mm -hmm. you know um so you know you need to know your audience and you need Mm -hmm. to be able to you know, just move and operate in that. Um, mm-hmm. And then credibility. That's a main, you know, credibility is the key. Like, you have to believe in what you're saying, but then you also have to, like, walk. What's the statement? He says, live what you say, but, you know, walk the walk, talk the talk and walk the walk. Mm-hmm. Right? You can't just say, I grew up in an era, um, do as I say, not as I do, you know, Mm -hmm. but what you doing is still affecting me because this is what I see Mm -hmm. you doing. So when I'm doing that, Mm -hmm. it shouldn't be, all right, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm bringing the wrath and I'm bringing the hammer. Mm -hmm. So you have to model, basically. Mm -hmm. You need to model what you say. And then... The last one was seek a response and action. And when you're talking, you have to give some give something to feel, um, remember, and to do. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, you just want to make sure that you have action. But also when you're communicating, you want to be clear. You, I always tell the students you want to be clear, you want to be concise in what you're saying. You don't want it to be vague. If I say I want... Um, ham and pineapples on my pizza Mm -hmm. you know and the server gave me pepperoni that's not what I asked for and Mm -hmm. just like you know be really clear about what you're saying but Mm -hmm. also I think definitely in this day and age you have to know what you want and that comes with Mm self-awareness that comes with you know what motivates you that comes with being empathetic of course but just know who you are. And when you know who you are, you're really going, you're going to communicate that. But you need to also remember like the, your audience when, when you're talking. Mm-hmm. How I talk to, um, I can't all, how I can't, I learned mm-hmm. early. I couldn't talk to Dante the way my grandmother talked to my grandfather. That mm-hmm. wasn't going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, if I did, you know, if, if I didn't, if I still wanted to sleep in the same room with my husband now, you know, my grandparents, they was in separate rooms and that worked for them. But, mm-hmm. you know, that wasn't what I wanted to do. So I needed to, you know, seek God on how do I effectively communicate with um, with my husband? Mm-hmm. You know, I grew up where there was a lot of yelling in my house. Um, it was a lot of yelling in my house where I'm not going to say that. I didn't scream and holler, Um, but I will say that I also tried to communicate differently with my kids. Now, it wasn't a perfect pirouette, Mm -hmm. Um, and they will tell you that, Mm -hmm. and I'll be like, whatever, you, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but 
um, you know, you just, you, you gotta know who you are. You gotta know where, um, be, be really self-aware. I know I'm rambling. I feel like I'm rambling at this time, but be really self-aware and know your triggers. Yeah. Um, what sets you off? Because what sets you off, yeah, will ultimately come out in how you're, how you're saying certain things. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go back and apologize. Yeah. And it's just like, you gotta take the walk of shame. Yeah. You don't want to be talking the walk of shame. You know, like Dante this morning, he pointed out something that I did, that I do continuously. He pointed it out. Now, immediately, I could have fired back and been like, why you do that? I could have. It was an emergency. It thought she had an emergency. No. Oh. Yeah, it could have done that. So I said, nope, I'm going a, I'm to a be quiet. And I said, you know what? Okay, I'm not going to play the tit for tat. And I said that. You know, I'm not going to play the tit mm -hmm. for tat. So I went, got in the shower, um, you know, got in the shower. And Now, mind you, the day before... You did something, and I sent a screenshot, screenshot it to you, and said, you know, this is unacceptable. And I didn't go back. I didn't go back and say anything. I just sent some emojis, and the last one was a laughing emoji. So I felt like, why are you coming at me this morning okay. when I gave you a pass yesterday, a pass. sir? Like, what is going on? So, okay, this morning, I'm not going to play the tit for tat. You're right. I do do that. I'll, I'll be mindful of that. Mm -hmm. Now, that was effective communication, was it not? Yeah. Okay, thank you. It was. However. <laughs> was it not? Was it not? However, you went even further, though. Mm -mm. You went a little further, and then you wanted to say some more stuff. Mm -hmm. That's when mm -hmm. the effective communication didn't come in, because okay. at that point, it was like, see? See? I said I wasn't doing the tip for tat, sir. Uh -huh. But now you want to keep going at it. Okay, how about boom, 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 boom? <laughs> Rapid fire. How many boobs? Yes. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Okay, because you do this, 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 that. <laughs> and it was a little quiet in the Somebody's car. It was still a little salty. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a little quiet mm -hmm. for a minute. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's how it goes. So I'm just saying, yeah, you know, know your audience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What sets you off? Bringing it back, right? Mm -hmm. Cause, um, and a lot of times it's gonna be your spouse that sets you off oh, the most. Yes, like. Like, because they have the most access to you, they have that the most access. They in there, you know them, they know you better mm -hmm. than anyone else. Yeah, so and what did you say? There were three things some about feel, take away. Like, I know that was I oh, the that last was one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that Let me too. Get back to my notes, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it says, Give, give something to feel, remember to do when you're communicating when you're communicating as you're seeking a response. Okay, from okay. From mm -hmm. the from your audience or mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. you know, the dialogue that you're having back and forth. And I often find that, yeah, with that that has to be that's a lot that Dante and I have to make sure, like when I'm seeking a response, mm -hmm. um, okay, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. You after know, we after we've had this after this. we've had this communication because okay. sometimes okay. the communication will be, okay, we just did it. We just talked. There's no application. There's no application, mm -hmm. or there's there's not a okay. This these are the next steps. Yeah. yeah. And so you know, in particular with with Dante, I de we definitely have to have okay. Is there an action once we finish? Yeah. That's because good. a lot That's of good. times it's like okay, I just told you, but then nothing happens. coming around the same right. We want, instead of if yeah, yeah, I don't want to. I don't it's in particular if it's something that you don't want to keep having to linger mm -hmm. over right mm -hmm. um a little or or keep coming back to that or um like I I say to myself mm. I don't want to uh walk around this mountain and see that same bush again mm -hmm. you know like I I I don't want to see the same landmarks mm -hmm. so or I been that that's statement that used to be used to say um been there done that got the t-shirt mm -hmm, i got mm -hmm. enough of those t-shirts i'm not trying to right. i'm i don't need seven more t-shirts right, right, right. <laughs> let's get this right. let's mm -hmm. get this together uh ma'am mm -hmm. let's get it together mm -hmm. so and what about you know. the feel part how does that work give something <clears throat> to feel i get the remember give something to remember let's remember this and let's do this but what's the i don't do y'all have an idea of what that feel part looks like 
give something, something to feel. feel. I mean, I feel like um, when it's talking about that with communication, especially when you want a response, you give them something that they can relate to or something that triggers literally an emotion. Right. And most of the time, you're going to want a positive emotion or mm-hmm. you're going to want them to laugh or you're going to... Because that's how they'll remember it more, too. Mm-hmm. If when people give... Um, um, I was listening to a pastor, and he said, well, people don't remember whole sermons. He said they, they remember, but they remember points, and they remember stories. Right. And I think that story oh. is the part where you mm-hmm. give them something to feel. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, when you're, you know, when somebody's being very authentic, mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. students lean in. Like, when we're, when we're learning and, you know, you know um, discussing a text or whatever, but when Miss Blount mm-hmm. has a Blount story, mm-hmm. when I say, oh, yeah, because my sons, I mean they're, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which son? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the big one or the small one? Like they, they have it because it's 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 more personal, and mm-hmm. so you you know you you go from connecting here, and now mm-hmm. we're now right. we're connecting, mm-hmm. now we're connecting here. Absolutely, I think I think that's that's what I mm-hmm. feel like it means, yeah. and I I know that's a, an effective way to reach an audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely, it, it's, that's an effective get them to laugh. Yeah, um, and give them something really authentic mm-hmm. to where they see I'm being very transparent right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is this is where I am, mm-hmm. and people lean in. Mm-hmm. Yes. People lean in with that. That's true. That's true. They do. I know with Dante, sometimes mm-hmm. uh, the words. Sometimes I'll have to preface when we're having a conversation. I'll say, I don't need you to just hear my words. I need you to hear my heart behind what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, you know, that for me, that lets him know, I, I need you to be actively listening mm-hmm. and, and be in with this conversation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as opposed to, yeah, I'm just listening mm-hmm. and you might be on your phone mm-hmm. playing Candy Crush mm-hmm. while, while, oh, no. <laughs> while, that's when I pause. Yeah. That's when I pause. Oh, my Montague, I'll yeah. be saying something to him and he'll be doing I'll be like, I when I pause, finish. he'll be like, uh-huh. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I'm listening. I'm listening. How that's you what, listening? Yeah, yeah, that's what Dante was saying. I'm listening. Um, uh-huh. I know you think you can multitask. Right. I mean, you know you're still young. Um, I don't think you can do yeah. it as effectively as right. you could. Right, as effectively. When you was 20, right. when you was 20 mm-hmm. can, you, can, we, can we put this down mm-hmm. for a minute? So, and that goes back to empathy. Yeah. Putting yourself in the other person's shoes and really hearing, hearing their heart, mm-hmm. right? Because I don't want you to be distracted right now while I'm pouring out my heart to you. Right, like, yeah. Can right. you put down your phone? Right. So. Well, my husband, um, the other day, he wanted to tell me something. We were in a car, and we were getting ready to go um, visit someone uh, at the hospital. And then he turned off the car and he put his hands on the wheels, and he said, Natara. And I knew. I was like, I, I, I'm not, I don't scroll a whole lot. I'm not on my phone a whole lot, but I had to turn this off, too. Mm-hmm. My, yeah. my train of thought and mm-hmm. me like okay so after we do this we gotta go here we gotta mm-hmm. make sure we got dinner yeah. we gotta do cause I was literally trying to order dinner for the kids while we were up and I knew he needs my undivided attention mm-hmm. yeah. right now mm-hmm. and you know he had a very transparent moment it was only like five minutes or so mm-hmm. it really turned into like a very needed very good conversation mm-hmm. but he, he needed to tell me what the space that he was in mm-hmm. yes and he you know I could tell by his tone. Mm. I could tell by his body, body language. language. Mm-hmm. The fact that he said my name in a very serious... Not, I knew he wasn't mad at me, because that's mm-hmm. a different way of saying Natara. Yeah. But I knew <laughs> it was just like, Natara. Mm-hmm. Almost like, I need you right now. Right. Because mm-hmm. A, B, and C. And I knew I had to turn it all off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. That The thought that... Because, yeah, you got to turn this off, too. Yeah, yes. we be acting like we paying attention. We be like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, we're we're like, Jared on, and I were here. On. We were down here in the basement, and we were talking about our plans for next week because we're going out of town. And he made a statement about future children or something like that. I don't know. I don't know how it tied into us planning for the vacation. I don't know. But when he said that, my mind went to, oh yeah, because one day when we have kids, and, then, and he's just a- talking about the trip, yeah. and, wah, yeah, wah, and that's wah. gonna be. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I was like, okay, so what about... And he was like, sweetheart. I just You said. didn't hear nothing mm-hmm. I just said. Mm-hmm. I was like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was listening. No. <laughs> and then I told him what happened. Like, my mind just completely got distracted. And I started thinking about that. He was like, wow. He was like, so hold on. 
is that what happens sometimes? Because I, I made this familiar statement to him as well. He said, so when you say that, does that mean you aren't listening? <laughs> and in my mind, or as I was thinking about what he was saying, I, I couldn't really answer that because I was like, maybe, mm-hmm. but I couldn't answer that. So he was just trying to learn, like, maybe I, maybe she's distracted when she says that because mm-hmm. that means she ain't really listening, mm-hmm. you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah, we do have to. <laughs> We're mm-hmm. so distracted. Sometimes I do it out loud, too. What For you real? mean? Like, like I'll be like, um, okay, so um Josh, when we go to the store, oh shoot, I gotta make sure uh-huh. I get some. So yeah. <laughs> did she did your father did uh-huh. your father send that message? Uh-huh. <gasps> I know yeah. I got, yeah, all right. Well yeah, don't worry do about that. it because I listen, because I tell you what, I'm not doing that today. <laughs> I do that. I do <laughs> that. Yeah. I mean, so anyway, when we go to the and Josh <laughs> will be like, Mom, yeah. all the different things that you just talked yeah. about, right? I'll be like, hold up, just yes. give me a minute. Yes. <laughs> Out loud. I do I do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, because Ace has been like, she done had a whole conversation by herself about a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> it's the same as scrolling. Yeah, yeah. You're just scrolling through your head. Right. Scrolling mm. through your own stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. I know I've had several conversations and fired off a lot with Dante, and then he'll say, oh, and I'm looking for a response, and he'll say, to what? Because I done said, like, <laughs> you don't have nothing to say. He's just like, Lynn, you said, you said a whole lot. What, yeah. do you, wow. what do you want me to? Yes. Yeah. Which one do you want me to respond to? <laughs> right. If I, I done remember. fired off like ten, and That's then so I'm true. like, I don't, I don't even know what I said. Yeah. Or I get or land the plane, Nick. <laughs> Wait, see, land see. the plane. <laughs> you up see. here? You circling? <laughs> you circling? <Land> you <laughs> circling? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Hmm. That's actually Jared. That's the opposite. Oh, like, you be wanting him to land the plane? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm like... <laughs> well, you know that. So I don't know where to... <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm trying to... And I can't even remember everything you said because you said so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm trying to process while you're talking, which I know I, I, that tends to be a distraction, too, because then I don't hear everything because I'm trying to process. Ooh, what did you say right there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm like, but that's why, baby, you need to, give, like, break. Can mm-hmm. we have a break mm-hmm. before you continue so that I can actually respond to this part of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So all of this effective communication. Effective communication, Mm -hmm. absolutely. And it's interesting how all of those just work together. Yes. For real, for real. Yes. You understand? Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't have one without the other, really. Mm -hmm. And something is sticking out to me from the Father Wounds video that you show with Mm -hmm. Jada, Pastor Jada Edwards. Um, That was so good. Where she was talking about... You, you know, let's say you're, you're emotionally intelligent you're, or your emotional intelligence is, is increasing, mm-hmm. but there is something that needs to be dealt with because you're in relationship with somebody else who who's, has low emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. And she was talking about how the person whose emotional intelligence is in a better place has to exercise patience mm-hmm. with the one that's at a low place in emotional intelligence. Mm-hmm. And um, how you really have to be that um, self-aware and grounded in who you are, mm-hmm. um, who God says you are, because if you put a lot of weight on their level of readiness, mm-hmm. then you're going to pull yourself down. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have to like be in a space where you're staying close to God's hip with this thing or this person, um, and allowing them to come on up and be ready right. when they're ready right. yeah. to deal with it or right. discuss it or right. whatever. Yeah. I've been in that place. That's a hard, that felt very hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is a hard place. It did. Mm-hmm. It felt very hard. And, um, my therapist has said, you know, when you start healing, internally and when you start working on yourself and all of these areas you need to know that you will start to feel impatient with those who are not Mm -hmm. or with those who are behind where Mm -hmm. you are and but she said that's where you have to push into prayer for them really intentionally absolutely and um and just exercise that patience yeah Yeah. but that's a hard space yeah Mm -hmm. but empathy Mm -hmm. remember where you were Mm -hmm. remember those shoes Mm -hmm. right Think about the shoes they're in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's hard. That can be hard. It was very sure. hard. That's very hard. Yeah. 
and, and not depend on their maturity mm-hmm. to foster yours. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you need to let God work on you. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And him working on you is not contingent on mm. what he's the work he's done in the people around you. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also be okay with the fact that that person may never mature. Mm-hmm. To may never mature, period. Mm-hmm. But then also may never mature to the level that you're at. Expecting. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That expectation. Mm-hmm. Like you need to you mm-hmm. need to come on up. To level up. What you yeah. Doing? Like yeah. you need to uh, yeah. come on up here mm-hmm. where I am. Because um, mm-hmm. they just may not. You know. In particular, mm-hmm. um, I know that um <clears throat> when in talking about the father wounds video um my dad wasn't at at the end of his life he was no longer able to even verbally communicate with anybody Mm -hmm. um so uh for for him to for me to continue to look for him to say you know or look for him to be able to say i'm sorry for all you know for not being there Or not doing what he um, what he needed or what he should have done as mm-hmm. a father, even mm-hmm. even that never came because yeah. he couldn't even verbally speak. Mm-hmm. So I definitely had to uh, depend on God mm-hmm. and draw closer um, for my level of maturity. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's this this lady. In um, the Bible study that I she saw. told, um, she shared her testimony about there was like a five year span when her husband had like turned away from God. Like he started out believing and then something happened. And then he, it was like for five years, he just didn't want anything to do with God. Um, he had said he was never going to go to church again or ask mm. him to go. Mm. Um, and she, you know, this through her because this was her husband, her leadership, head of her home, the father mm. of her children. Mm. And they started out as believers. And so she was like going to God, like, God, one, I know you told me to marry this man. Because I was about to, she said she was about to be single for the gospel. But God (laughs) put him in her life. And they got married and whatever happened. And then he's starting to act this way. And I I mean, I I only imagine what, how that would affect me in my marriage Uh with Quasi. Like, Uh what? Uh Are you crazy? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so she said that she went to God and was like, what's up? Like, I'm frustrated. What are, what are you doing? What is happening? And she said that God told her, you, like, basically, like, I got him. You keep praying for him. You keep living the way yeah. that I am growing you to live and treat him like he is who I said he is. Mm-hmm. That's the part that got me. Ooh. Because in my mind, I'm like, you ain't going to church. You ain't setting a good example for your sons. You ain't, and you want me to treat you like you doing all of this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And she said that she she did that to the best of her ability. She kept praying for him over those five years. And um, mm-hmm. one day he came to her and said, hey, before we go to bed, I want us to pray together. And she was saying in her mind, like, I think he had texted her or something. So she was away from the house. But when she got, like, when she got home, she was, okay, this is great. But then the longer that time went through the evening, she was like, all right, but this ain't going to last. Like, I'm going to see if he really, Mm because it's been like five years. Mm -hmm. And and sure enough, he remembered. He said, no, let's, I want to pray before bed. And at some point he was like, I want to go back to church with y'all. And and now they're, you know, back in, back in stride. I don't know how long ago this was, but Mm. um, Mm. that was just a testimony to me. And it made me think whatever somebody just said, when we were talking about the patience and the, you know, understanding you're here, but this other person is here and just giving that to God mm-hmm. really, um, it made me think about that testimony that she yeah. shared. That's mm. wonderful. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that is huge because one is your husband. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're, this is the person that you're married to. So you see this person every day, like they're in your house. Right. And I think about, that applying to children as well, right? Mm -hmm. When they're not living up to what you know Mm -hmm. they have the capability Mm -hmm. to live up to, but they're living the opposite of that to still hold on to what God has said, Mm -hmm. to still keep them in prayer, to still know and, and just know 
Or God, you said this about my son. You said this about my daughter. One day, they're going to get their act together. And they're going to be all right. Right. So, yeah, that's... Mm. It's hard. Like, it's your household. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. it's like you, hard. It's in your face every day. Like, it's you in don't your face. You can't. Yeah, you... She says she's about to be single. Yeah, she says she's about, she about to be single for the gospel, God. And you told me to marry this man. Like, what you doing? Mm. Correct. All right. Oh, okay. This was a full conversation. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. It was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To stay connected with us. <laughs> Check the show notes for the direct links to all the platforms where this podcast is available or keep watching right here on YouTube. And if this podcast helps to build you up in any way and you want others to benefit too, please like, subscribe, comment, and share as this helps to get the word out. This podcast is also a part of the Just Be brand, which you can follow via the links in the show notes as well. There's oh, merch and all there, y'all, including my book. I forgot it today. Just Be Child, which can oh. be purchased. Just, <laughs> said, it. Just, Just be, be, y'all. Be, y'all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's what I did. That's what I did. She took a plural. Child, y'all. Y'all. Exactly. <laughs> There's merch and all there, y'all, including my book. Just be child, which can also be purchased on Amazon. Mm. Thank y'all for being with us today at Sharp and Where, no matter the candid and foolish conversation. <laughs> we always end up whittling life down to what matters most, y'all. And we hope that as you hung with us today, you were inspired to do the same. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.